Thank you, Josh, for that scripture. Good morning. I am Trish Farrell, and I am the new Director of Youth and Family Ministries here. And I'm excited to be able to celebrate with this class of 2020. I think it's a great way for me to meet you all. That story that Josh read about Jesus as a boy in scripture is one of those stories that always makes me wonder. Makes me wonder, what was Jesus like as a boy? Was he quiet and studious? Was he hyper and active? Was he curious? Was he one of those kids who took things apart just to see what they were like? Was he talkative and nonstop? Or would he be the one in the corner watching and observing what was going on? was Jesus like? It also makes me wonder about Mary as a mom. Now, no mommy shaming, but when you lose your kid, you gotta wonder, right? I can kind of relate to that. I have three children, and we were the directors out at Judson Collins Camp. So my kids would go off and they would explore these 240 acres, take hikes or go on their four-wheeler, and I would panic if they were even five minutes late. So I understood Mary when Jesus disappeared. When I was a kid, things were a little different. I grew up in Macomb County, and our rule was when the lights went on, when the street lights went on, you had to come home. Or when my dad blew a whistle, he would stand on the porch and blow this really unique sounding whistle that the whole neighborhood, I'm sure, was annoyed by. But we knew it meant it was time to come home. So when Jesus is a boy, and he's lost in Jerusalem, what was going on? Well, let's look a little bit at the history because this is the only account of Jesus' childhood in scripture. First of all, it was Passover time. And this is the high festival for all the Jewish community. And so they were required, any man who lived within 15 miles of Jerusalem was required to come to the city to celebrate Passover. So at age 12, Jesus was now a man, and he was required to come, and this was his first time ever being there. Now, my kids are around the same age. Jesus was 12. My kids are like 10, 11, and 14. So I can picture this age of like middle schoolish, and him going to a new city, and traveling, and exploring all of these new traditions, and the energy and excitement that would have been around that. To get to Jerusalem, they would pack up with their neighbors and their family and their friends and create a caravan. And they would caravan to the city, do all of the traditional celebrations, and then caravan home. However, the caravan home was a little different than we may do it today. Back then, a lot of responsibilities were divided among the genders. So the women would actually leave Jerusalem earlier and head to that night's campsite. They traveled a little bit slower. They were there so they could set everything up. And the men would then follow along. And they would meet up at night at this campsite. So the question of how can Mary lose Jesus is because they didn't know, was he traveling with the women and the children first? Or was he coming with the men second? So imagine when they met up at that campsite that Mary was like, um, Joseph, where's Jesus? And Joseph would have been like, mm, I thought he was with you. You mean you don't have him? Nope. Turn around, let's go back to Jerusalem because now they realize that Jesus is missing. When they get to Jerusalem, they go to the temple and the Sanhedrin is there. Now the Sanhedrin is the Old Testament law experts. And after service, they would have invited everybody to come and sit and talk and discuss, more like an in-depth Bible study afterwards. So they go to where the Sanhedrin are meeting, and there is Jesus. Now he's sitting there at age 12, listening and asking questions, just like any other student. He was not the center of attention, he was not teaching, but everyone noticed there was something different about him. This was not just any old 12 year old sitting there listening and asking questions. There was definitely something different. And when Mary questions Jesus and Jesus responds, my father, it's a big clue, my father, Jesus is really revealing this clue of who he is 
and his relationship to the creator. And this is the first time we see this. We also see this importance of education, which today as we're talking about graduation Sunday, the importance of Jesus being educated in the Jewish culture and of the Old Testament. He kind of wrote it, but he still needed to be educated in it, and it was considered essential. I can understand the importance of education and making sure that your children are well educated. When we moved from New Hampshire to Michigan, I was very concerned about the changing of schools, going to Onsted schools, but it was wonderful. And now my kids are registering for Celine schools for the fall, cross your fingers. And um, I'm just so thrilled because everyone says Celine's the best. You're gonna have a great experience. There's no need to worry. Celine's the best education. And as a mom, I'm comforted by that because I understand the importance of education. I was thinking also that this year was actually supposed to be my 25th high school reunion. Makes me feel old, but we were supposed to celebrate 25 years next month. I went to a wonderful high school. I grew up in Macomb County, and I went to a private Christian school out there, Lutheran North, and I was really privileged to have the education. The teachers poured into me, and they became more than just my teachers. They were my friends and my confidants. They were my role models, because as time went on, I knew I could go to them with questions. They would often drive me so I could go to extracurricular activities. They would ask me every week and check in on me personally, not just regarding my education. I came up with some of the best friends out of high school. To this day, my friend is the one I met my freshman year of high school, one of my best friends, Angela. And we've maintained this friendship all these years. My other friends now live all across the country, and I've had the privilege of traveling to see them. Those lifelong friendships that you make in school are so valuable. And of course, all the opportunities you have. I got to go study in DC for a period of time, beyond mock trial experience, and all kinds of opportunities that I normally would have never had because of my education. One of those opportunities was being able to go to a private Christian school in Minnesota a couple of years later. I transferred after going to McComb Community College out to Augsburg College in Minneapolis to study youth and family ministry. Living in Minnesota was a whole different world than Metro Detroit, and I loved it. I loved it. I loved the city. I loved taking the light rail everywhere. I loved the Mall of America a little too much. Um, I loved the sports. It was an opportunity to grow, not just in my education, but myself as a person. And to study ministry there in Minnesota opened my eyes to a whole different world. Now, being a religion major, we would do things like sit around and debate theology at midnight on a Friday, right? Maybe a little religious geeks, but it was something I've never done in my life. And my heart and my eyes and my mind were opened to all of these things. There's something really special about the opportunities that come along with graduation, with education. Our graduates today really are missing a lot of those opportunities, a lot of those special moments that come the last semester of senior year. You work so hard to get that last semester where you can take a deep breath, you can prepare for the future, you can enjoy the fruits of your labor, and they didn't have that opportunity. It's really a unique thing when all the proms and the trips and the special events and the award ceremonies are non-existent. But the thing that is existent for our graduates are the foundations that were built during these high school years. The friendships that will carry them through the lessons learned that they will never leave, and the other opportunities of the other three and a half years that they had in their education. As they all move on to the next level, all of our graduates actually happen to be going away to college, 
They're gonna have so much more, and I really believe God is gonna bless them in so much more opportunities. But let's be honest, school isn't all rainbows and unicorns. My first semester in Minnesota, um, we had a suicide. I remember throughout my years getting knocks on my door because of broken hearts when people would break up. The financial stress of how am I gonna pay for this and the burden that it puts on having to work and go to school and maintain a social life and do it all well. It's not all perfect, but it's all worth it. School is actually not the most important education. Sorry to say that. But when that world comes crashing down, no one thinks, I wish I would have gotten an A in math, right? What the reality is, is that when those life comes crashing in, you turn to your faith. And when Jesus is sitting there as a young boy with the Sanhedrin, and he's educating himself about his father, God, he is setting an example for us. We are to do the same thing. We are to educate ourselves about our father, God. Because when it pours rain and you are in crisis mode, that's what you turn to. You turn to your God. My grandmother passed away in December and I was really privileged to have time with her before she passed. And she was telling me stories of her childhood and hopes and dreams that she had for us, her family. Never once did we talk about social studies or science. We talked about life experiences and we talked about our faith because she knew she was going to meet her creator and that was the most important education that she needed at that time was to talk about Jesus. Our spiritual education continues our whole life. Even those of us who have degrees in theology, I am learning every day and it's so important that we continue to grow in that education our entire lives. So I have four suggestions for all of us, not just our graduates, but our adults as well at all ages of life. Four suggestions of ways we can keep growing in this faith, keep growing in this spiritual education. Four S's, they all start with us. So the first one is set. Set your mind and your eyes on God. Be determined to be focused on him. Make wise choices that honor him. When we set our eyes on God, our road is very clear. The next steps become light lit up. The answers are obvious when you set your mind and eyes on God. The second S is surround. Surround yourself with like-minded people. You know the scripture says that your friends influence you and they're a reflection of who you are. When you go to college, you get to make all new set of friends. When you start new jobs or we go into new experiences later in life, we make all new friends. I'm at a new church making all new friends. It's so important to surround yourself with people who love God as well because their influence, their support, their encouragement in your Christian education is going to make a world of difference. The third S is study. Not just academic study so you get the grades at college, but studying the Word of God. Taking things and processing them and figuring them out for yourselves and seeing what is the truth? What is the history? What is this going to mean for me? And studying. Bible study is not just confirmation in middle school. Bible study is a lifelong skill of education that's important in our faith. And the last S is C. See God that he is pouring out blessings and opportunities on us. To our graduates, it's very easy to go away to school and quite frankly, forget about God. To think, I earned this, I deserve this, I worked hard for this. The I should become smaller and the God should become greater. 
that God is pouring out opportunities and blessings on you that yes, you've worked hard for and yes, you deserve, but it is all from our creator God. And it is essential to remember that everything good and precious comes from above. Set, surround, study, and see. This is the core of our education about God that carries us throughout our entire lives. It's what the most important education is about our very maker. I pray that these four S's will bless all of you that you may continue to grow in your faith. But for our graduates specifically, I pray that you may follow the example of Jesus, 12 years old, sitting with a bunch of religious leaders, learning about his Father in heaven. May God bless you and honor you. Amen.